Welcome to part two of the Speedy B stack review. I'm going to put this stack onto this old F450, which is horrible and honestly a bit stinky. It was in my friend's uh, garage for a long time. First thing to do, let's open this thing up, see what's in there, strip it out, uh, maybe clean it up and stop it smelling. Well, that's a lot of wires. We've got a lot of servo plugs here. We've got the old D8 R2 Plus, which is a, was a great receiver. And then something in here, I don't know if this is a beat of flight, clean flight, or or something else, and a lot of other stuff. So let's continue stripping, I think. Okay, so this is the main plate for an old DJI 450. You had these uh, 30 amp optos, they go onto this uh, plate where all these points are common. Um, and then you go into something like this Beck here to drive five amps because these were opto. And this then goes into this. This is a, a CC3D board. And looking at the symbol there, it looks like that was an original Open Pilot one, which is quite interesting. Yeah, it's got the little Open Pilot logo there. Anyway, we don't need these ESCs. So I'm going to desolder all of these, get rid of the Beck. Uh, that's not going to be there. And I think I might just take all these off and just clean them up because these are absolutely filthy. So, yeah, uh, let's strip down some more. Ah, some weird stuff coming out of these solder joints. It's uh, kind of like rust. I scrubbed all the dirt and spiders and stuff out of it. And these are all the components. And it's pretty much split here into the, the fact that this is what I'm going to be using. So these are the frame pieces, the legs, the original motors and obviously the screws that go with it. The stuff I'm not going to be using is the Beck, that old XT60, the 30 m Opto ESCs, the flight controller, the receiver. Uh, these are the legs. I thought about using legs, but then I thought it's not really very accurate if we do that. So yeah, this is what we got. Basically, I'm now going to rebuild this. Um, so we're going to install the flight controller somehow on here. You notice there's no mounting holes on these old things. They just had tape and you sort of stuck it down. So we're going to install the ESC and a flight controller. We're going to need some larger cable here to to be able to have enough to get to the, the ESC. And then we'll find a camera and VTX and then we'll see how this thing flies. So uh, yeah, let's get on with the build. Okay, welcome back. It's It's been about, uh, I don't know, a week. Uh, because I had to get some bits. So I was just testing that the stack fitted. What I've got here is I've got the basic stack. I've got this little 3D printed bit uh, I made just to create like a present stack and I'll just put some uh, mounting tape on that. And I found uh, a Rush FPV Ultimate Plus, which I can pop on there because you might as well have decent stuff. I found in my spares box this Nebula Micro and we've got an ELRS receiver somewhere and we'll just have to mount an antenna somewhere. The reason I was waiting was because obviously ESC to there is a bit away and I didn't have any 18 AWG wire. I've got two meters of it, which should be enough to do 12 lots of cabling either way. We're probably going to put bullets on because these have got bullets on. Not particularly like bullets, but I think they should be okay. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's build this up, see what happens. So the first thing I did was to solder up the motors to the ESCs plug it into beta flight and just see if I could spin them up. She lives. Next thing to do was the connections for the flight controller. So I've added on the VTX here and on the bottom bit, you can see the receiver and the camera. Okay, so I fixed the stack on. I was feeling all pretty good with myself. Everything wired up nicely, everything ready to go. But then I realized I didn't have that long of a cable, so I couldn't turn that round the other way, which means I've got the antenna, the camera, and the receiver all coming out the front. I always thought this would be a bit of a problem to mount, but I thought I'd be doing it from the back. Um, Camera-wise, there is a hole there, but I couldn't find a mount for this, even on like Thingiverse, I sort of checked it out. So I went ahead and sort of designed one, and that should go in there, and we'll stick that down. On this guy, I thought, oh, maybe I can get it somewhere there. So again, I went off and I designed this weird little bit of TPU. And the idea here is this goes down there and the antenna goes up there and we'll, we'll 
put a bit of hot glue around just to make sure it doesn't come out, but it's pretty tight. So, uh, yeah, let's put that together. I mean, antenna-wise, this is not a problem. It'll just go down here and we'll, you know, we'll cable tie this up somewhere. But um, let's let's do that and let's get these, these wires sort of, you know, nicely put out of the way and stuff and we'll see how we look. Okay, well, this is everything in place. We've got the ELRS antenna there, the receiver is underneath. Got the VTX antenna there, camera's installed, the wiring's kind of tidied up a bit. So I'm going to put the top on and then we're going to get this thing configured in beta flight, get the mode set up, uh, get the VTX table there, check everything works out. Then we'll stick some props on and we'll try a garden hover. It's built and really we need to do a quick hover test, just see if it generally works and uh, if we need to change anything before trying in the field. So let's try it here and watch out for the dog poo. So that was a little bit smoother than expected. Uh, I started off in auto level, an angle, and the last stuff there was just in uh, acro, just making sure we could hold it steady. And it looked fairly steady, a few little wobbles when the, the breeze hit it, and it was definitely smoother in, um, in acro. Possibly wouldn't use this battery, it needs about 50% throttle to hover. Um, but I've got plenty of smaller four assists, so yeah, that's ready to test at the field proper and see if this thing can, you know, go upside down, but not hit the floor. Hello and welcome to the very wet field. Once again, this seems to be part of the course. We've got a weather window of today. When I checked last week, we had a clear week and I thought, oh, we might dry out a bit. But since that time, yesterday was kind of okay, but I was busy. So I've come out today and then the next rest of the week, it's gonna be raining again. So the field is not dry. The saving grace of that is the cows have been put inside because they churn up the field into nothing. So I've got this area to myself. Otherwise I'd be flying over the cloud field and if it went down it would sink. So we're here, we're ready to fly. My only worry here is my batteries. I haven't really got the right size 4S for these. I've either got quite small like this 1300 or too big the 5200 but I thought I'd err on the size of going light, light quick flights and just see if we can keep going. I'd maybe start off slow, see how it feels before we get acroing but yeah that's what we want to do but I don't think we've got more than one crash in us because this will break and the motors will probably be under the water in this field but hey let's try see what happens we'll try and do some live commentary and uh, see how it it turns out with the um, the mic Oh man, that is, uh, that is shaky. Did I even press record? I can't remember. Ha. So as it happened, I had pressed record on the DVR, but I just couldn't remember if I had. So I decided to bring it down just here in the grass so I could uh, basically make sure I had turned it on properly because you don't get any indicator that it's going on these goggles. Well, I can't remember I pressed record the first time, so let's go again. And, uh, yeah, very shaky, very horrendous. The question of will acro is, I mean, yeah, it does <laughs> loops and stuff. It's just awful trying to hold the, uh, the camera in a straight line as we go. So I'm sure this is going to be awful for you guys to watch, but you know, never mind, it's, it's doing it. Wow, we got low battery already. <laughs> this is a big old thing to get on a little 1300. It's just got the shakes, as, as you might expect from something this size. Anybody over here? I don't see anybody. <laughs> I 
mean, the um, it reacts properly. It reacts with the sort of uh, speed you were expecting. It just uh, is another vibration. And I'm not sure if this is down to the props or the tune or the fact I've got the camera stuck in there with a little piece of TPU. We've also got a bit of a weird um, issue with the the uh, the picture going a bit dodgy there occasionally. I don't know what that is. It should be alright. It's going to get a few fly pasts. See what it looks like in the camera. Normally if you look at these things externally it's like oh it looks absolutely fine. The camera should be pointing that way so if I go past here I should just have a little bit of a, a view. Do the same this way. Battery's getting a little bit low, so let's uh, let's bring this thing down and swap the battery. I mean, the good news is it's not. If I put a great big battery on, it's like 50, 60 percent of hover. Over here, it's more like 30, 40. But these, it feels like these are pretty small props for a craft this size. I'm very nervous about trying to bring this close in for a landing because it's like, look at the size of this thing, look at me. But we just get close and then just drop it down. That's close enough. Okay, that was the first battery and it survived. Okay, that was so much fun. I think we should do it all again. <laughs> okay, this is a 1500 battery, so it should be a little bit better. But let's see if we can a bit of a blast there. You see we've got a, um, a barometer on the flight controller which is pretty nice. But what happens if we do a full a full throttle up? Oh man that's slow. That's very slow. And what's up with what's up with the picture? Oh we're losing the picture. That's not good. That's weird. One R1 Ah. I don't quite know what's happening there, apart from the fact it's not very happy and it's given a real wonky picture. That's a bit weird. Okay, so I'm not going to go up high and try an inverted yaw spin because it just went a bit dodge, but... Oh, man, it's doing it again. What about a split S? Not a very good one. Weirdly, I'm getting used to how much this is shaking around, which is... Whoa, that's not right. <laughs> which is perhaps not the, the way to do it. It's amazing what your, your eyes get used to. It's taking all the shakes and it's just like, yeah, yeah, we can, we can work that out. There's me there. I don't know what's up with the VTX, it is not very happy by the looks of it. That was alright, wasn't it? I mean, there's certain things that are a bit different because of the size of this thing. Oh! <laughs> it's hilarious when you lose the picture halfway through. It's great fun. Um, when I get finished with this one, if I'm still alive, I'll, uh, I'll have a look, see what's happening, because it's a bit weird what's suddenly blocking the VTX. It should be on 200 milliwatts, but um, it's clearly not uh, that happy about something. I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of crap in there, and this is a, a Rush FPV VTX, which is my favourite, and you know something I think is really good. sure how much of the gate was open. Every time I go near it I can't see it well enough. Oh, I, I kind of see it a bit there. I wanted to go through the... Oh, that's... This is weird shit happening with the, the VTX. <laughs> What's going on? Why is it being so poo? I do not know. It's... It kind of looks like the... The voltage to it's not right. And I, 
I checked this out at home and it was fine. Hmm. I don't know what that's all about. What's the gap like through these trees? That's tight. That's tight for this little thing. Oh, that's because that's not the one I usually use. Oh, shit. This is where you don't need the VTX going in. Oh, no, can't see. Where am I? Oh. <laughs> and we just turned off altogether. Let's go fetch it. So we took the risk and went through the, um, the tree gap and we lost the picture completely. We clearly got something not right with that VTX. It's a good VTX. It should be fine. So I ditched it down and as I ditched it, of course the picture came back so I could have maybe rescued it, but it's just over in that field. So let's go see if we can fetch it. Uh, it's always the way, isn't it? They have to land upside down in all circumstances. That is not looking too bad though. I think that's cool to fly again. But let's take a look. See, ah, I can see the problem. We've lost the antenna. When did that come off? Ah, oh, must not be tightened enough. Oh no, I guess it hasn't got a spare antenna anywhere. Damn it. Well, on the good news, I think we've solved the problem of why we're getting a bad picture and it's because the antenna's no longer there. I was trying to figure out how it came off and that TPU piece, there is some flex in it and I was a little bit worried about it maybe hitting, but generally speaking, we're going forward and if it's gonna flex, it's gonna flex backwards and it doesn't seem like it's got sheared or anything as far as I can see. It looks like it's just not been on tight and somehow managed to get itself unscrewed. So an annoyingly, I used to carry like a linear spare in my bag, but I've emptied my bag and repacked it for so many different models. It's not there anymore. So we'll have to go back and get uh, a new antenna on there. But what I thought I'd also do, because of course this is about the speedy B board and it seems to work fine. It's, it's like this was flying well, it's reacting properly. When you put it into like a roll or a flip, it's, it's nice. It feels like a rigged quad. It's just flying forward. It feels like you're flying a bag of old spanners. So the speedy B board out of the box doesn't support bi-directional B shot. It's running uh, BL Heli S and needs BL Heli 32, but you can install something else on it. Was it Blue Jay? One of the other ESCs, which I've never done before. So I thought rather than try and tune it as it is, because well, I don't know what I'm doing really, we should put it in the best possible position. So in part three, yes, there's gonna be a part three. Uh, I've started, so I've finished. We'll go back and we'll see if we can flash the ESC board to get bi-directional D-shot on, and that might help us uh, get smoother stuff before we try and start messing with it to see if it can be made smoother still. But yeah, it, it flew, it acroed, and it survived. So let's see what happens next. Just a quick note before I go, and I'm in the edit. I, I was interested in watching did the antenna come off some place in battery number one? I didn't notice it. And the answer is yes. If you look at the left hand side, that is the external camera from the first battery. On the right hand side, we've got the external camera from the second battery and you can see that antenna is already gone. I don't know how I didn't notice it. It's just not something I was looking for. Fortunately, I think the, uh, the VTX seems to be okay. Obviously you shouldn't run them without an antenna, but uh, it seems all right so far, but I'll do some more testing. And as I said, we'll be back in part three and do some more stuff with it. Hope you found the video interesting and a, a bit of fun. And of course, there's links down below if you want to check out the Speedy B stack. I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.